pretty much everybody in my family has had a gun pointed to their head. They thrown the slab of concrete on Zelo's head and I sat with him. I was the first one at his side um, and calmed him down until he passed on. In 2020, half of the world's population lives in cities. In 30 years, by 2050, it's expected that two-thirds of everybody on our planet will live in a city. We have entered what Kofi Annan has described as the urban millennium. Cities offer huge opportunities for jobs, education, healthcare, innovation, and culture. But there's also a dark side to this rapid increase in the size and number of cities. And that's the devastating impact of drugs and crime. Drugs are in cities because there's a market for them. The competition in these urban drug markets is often regulated by violence. And most often this affects people who are on the margins of society. Drugs, crime and cities are closely linked. Most of these places that are that have thriving drug markets, uh, have the highest homicide rates in the world. Um, we see a lot of inequality, unemployment, and you know, it is from these marginalized, marginalized communities that uh, organized criminals prey upon to recruit, um, recruit young people to work on, on, this, uh, on this drug trade. Some cities are even becoming more dangerous than war zones. In the past 20 years, more Americans have been killed in Chicago than the total number of American soldiers killed in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. The root cause of, of, of violence specifically uh, is violence itself. So the people themselves who are violent have experience with violence. And so this is something that uh, they have been exposed to and then it's something that they have taken on themselves. So it's, uh, it's very much a contagious process. So with COVID, we, you, know, you could see what an out of control epidemic looks like pretty clearly. This is the exact same thing that's happening with violence. And yet the response is often inadequate. Indeed, in some cases, it makes the problem even worse. The militarization of law enforcement has been uh, really a global trend that we have seen. Countries that, uh, and cities that face these levels of uh, violence uh, perpetrated by criminal uh, groups formulate this police um, approach that is quite confrontational in, a, in an attempt to defeat them or to display force in order to coerce criminal organizations to lower their, their violence levels or to be completely defeated by, by the police forces. However, another thing that we have observed is that these, uh, these policies only tend to create a cycle of violence. There is another way to reduce drugs and crime in cities, a way to stop the spiral of violence and build safer communities. And that is to focus on strengthening resilience and promoting sustainable urban development. Some lessons can be learned from the approach of a method known as alternative development. The alternative um, development is a rural development approach um, which um, sets on the root causes and not only on the symptoms of um, drug crop cultivation. The assumption is that uh, farmers or smallholders uh, cultivate drug crops because of um, lacking alternatives or lacking um, sources of income. In, uh, at the Global Initiative, we've used uh, principles um, of alternative development and applied similar strategies to cities. We focus on neighborhoods that are particularly affected in, um, with drug markets and where drug markets flourish. An urban development approach follows the principle that you can't really arrest your way out of the problem, but it follows a more comprehensive approach, including a focus on youth, urban upgrading, investment into businesses. For example, in a neighborhood in Cali, an NGO constructed schools, parks and a cultural centre. Similar projects have also been realised in South Africa, in Manenberg for example, where they've set up a youth lifestyle campus, really focusing and promoting on sports and arts activities. Focusing on violence reduction, working with young people, improving community policing, 
promoting local investment, improving infrastructure, and taking a health-centered approach to reducing drug use have all shown benefits in many cities of the world. The key is to get the community involved, to strengthen partnerships through dialogue and cooperation, and to reduce vulnerability among marginalized groups in order to strengthen social resilience. The goal is to make neighborhoods safer and more livable. For example, in the case of Sinaloa, we work with a community of, uh, of activists, artists, journalists, business people who get together and come into these uh, neighborhoods in marginalized areas, places where really kids see drug trafficking as the only option. A lot of the children that attend these programs come out and saying like, you know, I want to be a chef, I want to be a journalist, I want to be uh, an artist. Um, they're giving with other choices and I think this is a good beginning. In, in most our children get into gangs because of the unemployment in the home structure. When the project came about, we said like, um, let's give them a hundred grand stipend every week for participating in the project. And then we have made lunch, breakfast for them while in the class. And you could really see that is all they needed. They needed somebody to believe that they are able to make it. It's about trust and resilience rather than force. You need these positions of people that are outreach workers who can go into a community, who are from that community, and the people trust them, they'll talk to them. And when they talk to them, they'll not only listen, but they'll take it in and be influenced by it. And so, you know, when you have that sort of relationship and that kind of conversation, that's how you can change behaviors. Reducing crime in our cities is one of the greatest opportunities to improve the way that we live today and for the future. A heavy-handed approach to dealing with urban drug markets is not working. Of course, we have to put a priority on security, but we also need to support health and development and strengthen resilience within our communities. If it's clear that it's possible to do things differently and better, then what are we waiting for?